ہمیں So what the sheet metal bending is, sheet metal bending is simply straining any sheet along an axis. Like let's suppose we have an axis here. So the straining the sheet along an axis, along a straight axis, that is simply termed as a sheet metal bending operation. So during this bending operation, the metal on the inside of the neutral axis, if you see closely here, During this bending operation, the metal on the inside of this neutral axis, the inside this area of the neutral axis, right? And so the metal on the inside of the neutral axis is experiencing compression, while the metal on the outside of the neutral axis experiences tension. The metal on the outside. here it experiences tension it is in a stretch position then metal on the outside and the metal that is inside the neutral axis that is under the compression and this bending is obviously it's a plastic deformation it's a permanent deformation so uh, we stress it enough so that it takes a permanent deformation in this way but this bending operation doesn't affect the thickness of the sheet it has little or no effect on the thickness of the sheet right so what is the sheet metal bending operation sheet metal bending operation is simply straining a sheet along a straight axis straining a sheet along the straight axis right so we have a neutral axis so the metal on the inside of the neutral axis it is under the compression while the metal on the outside of the neutral axis that is in the tension and this bending operation doesn't affect the thickness of the sheet So what are the two types of the sheet metal operations uh, sheet metal bending operation so the primarily we have two major types of sheet metal bending operation the first one is known as a V bending and that is performed on V dies the V dies you can see here and the second one is the edge bending and it is performed on wiping dies So in the case of the V bending, the sheet metal is bent between a V-shaped punch and die. So we have a sheet metal and we have a V-shaped uh, die and a V-shaped punch. So the sheet metal is strained between the V-shaped punch and die. It is used for low production and it is performed on a press break, right? And they are somewhat inexpensive. While in the case of the edge bending, we have an additional uh, feature that is known as a pressure pad. The purpose of pressure pad is to hold the sheet metal uh, for the punch for the bending by the punch. So it involves cantilever loading. Cantilever loading means it is supported at one end while free at the other end. So it is it involves cantilever loading of the sheet metal. A pressure pad, this one, is used to apply the force F H that is the holding force, and against the die. we have the die here so the pressure pad is applying the force against the die and the punch exerts the force the punch exerts the force to yield the sheet metal so the maximum amount of bend that can be create using the edge bending that is 90 degree so it can bend the sheet along the 90 degrees right but uh, there are some special wiping dies where we can have some more bending than the 90 degrees While well, in the case of the V bending, we can bend more than 90 degrees in this case. So if we move towards the analysis of the bending operation, so some of the important terms of sheet metal bending are uh, identified here. We have a sheet with the width of W, and we have the thickness that is T. We have the internal radius of the bend, right? We have the neutral axis here. so the inside is under the compression 
it's shown here and the outside is another tension if we strain the sheet metal along uh, axis so the angle it is strain which is also known as the bent angle the angle along which uh, by which it is strain which is also known as the bend angle that is known as the alpha and the remaining is known as as the alpha prime so we have alpha plus alpha prime equals to 180 degrees and we have the band radius r that is shown here right and the width of the part that is equals to w so one of the important term in the case of the sheet metal bending is the band allowance what the band allowance is if the band radius this one this r if the band radius is very small comparative to the thickness of the sheet compared to the thickness of the sheet the metal tends to stretch during bending so when we bend it there's some stretching experience here so let's suppose if we if we have a sheet like this if we have a sheet like this one and there is a if you draw a neutral axis so there is some length of neutral axis like length of neutral axis and if you bend the same sheet at a certain radius if you bend the same sheet at a certain radius let's say r so we see our neutral axis would be like this one right so the length of the neutral axis before and after the bending should be same but that's not the case of the radius uh, for the small bend radius there's some stretching or along this bend so because of that the length of the neutral axis uh, increases during the bending operation so in order to estimate that bending uh, in the final part we have a term we have an allowance that is used to calculate so the bend allowance is simply the stretching of the neutral axis that is the length by which the neutral axis has increased right so bend allowance is equals to a b 2 pi equals to 2.2 alpha by 360 into the bent radius plus kba into the t where kb is a st uh, stretching factor kb equals to t so we have bent angle as we, as we have already seen r is the bent radius t is the stock thickness and we have the kba equals to uh, stretching factor you can say right so if r is less than twice of the stock thickness if you are bending the sheet such that the radius of the bend is less than twice of the stock thickness then the value of kba will be equals to 0 0.33 and if r is greater than twice of the stock thickness then value of kba would be equals to 0 0.5 then there's another phenomena that takes place in the case of the bending operation that is known as a spring back so in this phenomena uh, when the bending operation has been performed on the sheet metal when this punch is removed at the end of the deformation so because of this elastic energy within the material it tries to regain its original shape so let's suppose we have bent the sheet metal 
at an angle of alpha prime b but once the pressure pad is removed let's say the alpha prime b was equals to uh, 80 degrees but once the pressure pad or the punch has been removed it has uh, the angle has been changed to alpha prime which might be uh, 95 degrees right uh, because uh, the angle has somewhat increased because it tries to regain its original shape which was the flat sheet metal so this is phenomenon is known as a spring back so how to calculate it uh, the spring back so it is illustrated using this formula the spring back or equal equals to alpha prime minus alpha prime t divided by the alpha prime t so uh, in this case alpha prime is the included angle of the sheet metal part while alpha prime t that is included angle of the bending tool and the angles are obviously in the degrees but how to overcome this problem of the spring back because it is obviously disturbing our uh, dimensions and this spring back increases with the increase in the modulus of elasticity of the material obviously if you are using material which has a higher modulus of, modulus of elasticity so there will be a higher amount of spring back, spring back in that material so to compensate the spring back uh, primarily there are two methods to compensate the spring back and the first one is known as the overbending and second one is known as the bottom so overbending as the name suggests uh, we slightly overbend the material let's say if we want to achieve bend angle of let's say 92 degrees right so what we do we will bend it uh, we will bend it at an angle of let's say 86 degrees so because of the spring back phenomena once we achieve the angle of 86 degrees so because of the spring back phenomena once we achieve the angle of 86 degrees and the punch has been removed it will try to regain its original shape so the bend angle will increase and we will finally achieve the angle of 92 degrees so obviously this calculation is based on the uh, many factors the especially the young's modulus of the material we are using right second method is uh, bottoming and what the bottoming is it involves squeezing the part at the end of the stroke so once we have reached the end of the stroke we will slightly squeeze the part along this this edge along this end so this will uh, plastically deform the sheet metal uh, at the certain angle so it's like a mechanical interlocking once you achieve the uh, shape where once you achieve the bend angle so these are the two ways to calculate the to avoid the spring back phenomena the first one is over bending you will slightly over bend the material so that once the pressure pad has been removed the punch has been removed it will regain its original try to regain its original shape so you will ultimately have the desired angle and second one is the bottoming you will squeeze the sheet metal at the end of the stroke right what we do we squeeze the at the end of the stroke so it will kind of a plus uh, mechanical interlocking for the material and that's all for the spring back phenomena now the another uh, term that is important for the sheet metal bending that is the bending force the force required to perform the bending depends on the geometry of the punch and die we are using and the thickness of the sheet the strength of the material we are using so the bending formula 
let me erase this one so we have the first formula that is a band allowance what was the band allowance that was the stretching along the neutral axis the second one was the bending uh, the spring back phenomena and the third one is the uh, bending force that is equals to F KBF into tensile strength of the material into the width and the stock thickness square divided by D right so where D is the opening die opening dimensions Uh, D is the die opening dimension, right? And T is the tensile strength of the material, and KBF is the uh, bending force coefficient. So for the V bending, we have KBF equals to 1.33, and for edge bending. KBF equals to 0.33 these are the all required terms for the sheet metal bending operation now we'll move towards some numerical problem for the sheet metal bending and then we will uh, see some specialized type of the bending operation so uh, in this section we are performing the numerical problem so what it says a sheet metal blank is to be bent as shown in the figure here the metal has a modulus of elasticity uh, that is equal to 205 10x3 megapascals and the yield strength of 275 megapascals and the tensile strength of 450 megapascal. Determine the starting blank size uh, part A and the part B is determine the bending force if a V die is used with the die opening dimensions of 25 millimeter. As we have just seen the die opening dimension that is equal to D. This is the D. So if if in this figure if you see here uh, we have the dimensions that is 38 on this side 25 on this side we have an included angle of 120 degrees so obviously the remaining angle is 60 degree and we have the stock thickness of 3.2 uh, millimeters and the width of the sheet is 44.5 right so let's start with the starting blank size. So we know that the width is equals to 44.5 millimeters and the length total length would be 38 this plus this bent area the bent allowance we have seen in the previous slides plus 25 so we have 38 plus the bent allowance the stretching on the this bent area plus 25 so and we have the included angle of 120 degrees and the external angle of 60 degree as we know that uh, we have r equals to 4.75 millimeter while the stock thickness is equals to 3.2 millimeter so r is less than 2t so the value of kba would be equals to the band allowance co uh, constant would be equal to 0 0.33 right so this is how we can calculate the AB so AB equals to 2 pi in alpha by 360 into R plus KBA into T so that is equals to 2 pi we have the alpha equals to 60 by 360 into the R we have R equals to 4.75 plus 0 0.33 into what is the thickness that is 3.2 so the band allowance would be equals to 6 0.08 millimeter 
this is the bend lunge now the part b is about the bending force and as we know the bending force is equals to f equals to kbf into the tensile strength into wt square that's width into the thickness square divided by the opening die opening dimensions so if you write it here that is f equals to kbf as we have a v die operation so the kbf would be equals to 1.33 into the tensile strength that is 450 megapascals into the width that is 44.5 into 3.2 square whole divided by 2.5 that is <coughs> as it is 25 uh, millimeter so that is 2.5 so the total force is equals to 10.909 newtons this is the value of the force so beside the uh, general operations of the bending there are some specialized operation that is known as other bending operations so we have six different types of the bending operation based on the geometry of the product so we have uh, three different types of the bending operation the first one is known as the Flanging. Then we have the hemming and the seaming. And we have discussed this what the seam is in the lectures in of the body deformation and the curling. So there are some specialized type of the bending operation. What is the flanging? Flange is some to bend something at an angle of 90 degree. That is simply called a flange. For the sake of uh, for the sake of assembly, you can say uh, you must have studied in the subject of fluid mechanics the flange or the flange uh, joint. So we have a pipe that is bent at an angle of 90 degree from the end, like this. So the pipe that is bent at an angle of 90 degree from the end like this one so this is called a flange so we have the bolts from both ends so that is called as a flange contact so flanging is bending operation in which an edge of a sheet metal is bent at an angle of 90 degrees like in this case the it is bent at an angle of 90 degree that is called as a flanging operation flange can be formed over a straight a bend axis uh, as illustrated in this diagram uh, along the straight axis like this one or along the bent axis like this one so they both are flange one the flange bending the second one that is called as the hemming uh, it involves bending the edge of the sheet over on itself so this one is the hemming that bending the sheet metal on itself like this one if uh, in more than one bending step so it, does, it is not necessary that we have to bend uh, this uh, or we have to perform the hemming in a single step it can be performed on in multiple steps the third one that is known as a seaming is a somewhat related operation in which two sheets metal are assembled like this they are joined along a, a line uh, they are assembled by mechanical bending that is known as a seaming operation that is a bending operation and the last one is a curling operation it is also known as the beading it is also known as the beading operation 
so it forms the edge of the part into a roll it forms the edge of the part into a roll or a curl that is simply the curling or the beating operation the purpose especially for the uh, hemming one its main purpose is for the safety or uh, to increase the strength uh, along this area of the sheet metal or to have some aesthetics to some to make the product look good so that's why you perform the hemming one and there are some other miscellaneous uh, objectives which you achieve using the uh, this specialized type of the bending operation so that's all for this lecture for the sheet metal bending in the next lecture we are going to discuss the third type of the sheet metal bending that is the last type that is the drawing or the deep drawing operation and then we will discuss some specialized sheet metal operation that are performed on uh, mechanical uh, by on the rubber uh, tools or some other tools